friends, welcome to God Focus this morning. The title of today's episode, Broken Vessels. In Judges chapter 7 is the story of Gideon. We normally focus on the fact that God commanded Gideon to send most of his army home. He went from a large company of warriors down to 300 men. Something I noticed this time when reading was how large the company was against them. I realized always that there was a big army. Uh, it was the Midianites and the Amicalites, so basically two armies. Judges 7 and 12. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. That's a huge army to go to war against. God encouraged Gideon by sending him to listen to his enemy. Judges seven thirteen through 15. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon and the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. God sent fear into the enemy's camp long before Gideon ever assembled his army to go against them. Judges seven sixteen through 20. And he divided 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow a trumpet, and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and a hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hand and the trumpet in their right to blow withal and cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. They took their light with them, but it was hidden until they could get closer to the enemy. Then they collectively blew their trumpets and let their light shine. Judges 7 and 21 and they stood, every man in his place, round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. The entire army of the Midianites and the Amalekites ran from Gideon's men because, with the help of the Lord, they appeared to be mighty. This made me think about our enemy and the people he is using to destroy as much of the world as possible. They do not want anything to do with Christian values, morality, decency, love, and kindness. They have been overtaken by the enemy. Just as the, the Midianites and the Amalekites were afraid of Gideon, you can be sure that our enemy and his foot soldiers are in great fear of us. Satan knows if we ever come together in the way the body of Christ should be, that God will use us to destroy him and his army. We have to be in unison. Notice God only took those that drank a certain way. They thought alike. We have to be in one mind and one accord. Notice they took empty vessels and put lights in them, but the light didn't shine until the vessels were broken. We as children of God are empty vessels until he puts his light within us, but we can never truly let our light shine until we yield to God in brokenness. We allow him to strip our pride and selfish motives, our judgmental attitudes, and anything that is not of him. When we release the things he wants us to let go of, then he can use our light to shine into the darkness. God uses broken things and broken people. Every time we face something difficult, 
God is peeling away a little more of us, which allows our light to shine a little brighter. I read a story once, and I don't know who wrote it or I would give them credit, but there was a woman that had a pole that she carried two pots to her well to get water. One was perfect on the outside and held all the water within it. One had some cracks in it and would leak water all along the path back to her house. One day the vessel that had been broken said to the woman, I'm useless. I don't even know why you take me to the well. I have very little water left by the time we get back to the house. The woman smiled and said, Do you see the lovely flowers all along my path? They would not be there if you didn't have broken places. How do you think you got the broken places to start with? Because that is what I needed in order to water my flowers. We often feel like we're broken and useless. The enemy wants us to think that we have no purpose. But we cannot spread beauty if we do not allow God's living water to flow out of us like that broken vessel. Being a light and allowing God to flow in our lives is not for the faint of heart. It takes great strength and courage to be vulnerable before God and before people. Looking weak to others is one of mankind's greatest fears. The next time the enemy tells you you have nothing to contribute, that you have nothing to share, that you are worthless and not fit to do anything for God, remember the story of the little woman with the beautiful flowers along her path. Then use your brokenness to go out and let your light shine, sharing God's living water. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be bold, be brave, and keep your God focus. Like, share, and subscribe for more encouragement. Have a wonderful weekend.